G'day guys, it's Glenn VK for NGA. Welcome to the shack. Well, that's what I normally say, but we're not in the shack. We're in the garage. I've got the camera set up on the bench because in this video I'm going to show you how to solder header pins onto a Raspberry Pi. This is a Pi Zero, Pi Zero W, and this one came without header pins here. So you can buy them. Normally you can buy them with the header pins uh, or without. Uh, I buy them without because I like to solder my own. Um, two reasons. Well, actually one reason. Saves money. <laughs> I'm not going to pay somebody else to do something I can do. So if you're building a hotspot, then you would have your modem board. And in the modem board packet, there would be two little header pins, two, two sets of... Um, two by five so you would uh, you would want to solder those something like that and that and that's how you'd want to solder them to mate up to your um, to your modem board now you see got a blob of blue tack here that's there for a reason and I'm going to show you how I do it because I use a modem board uh, in the soldering process. So this is an old dead modem board but if you have uh, a modem board that you're using to build your hotspot you can certainly use that. So what I do is I put the blob of blue tack on here it's quite high because I want the blue tack to press on to um, to the Raspberry Pi so I load the header pins into so the long pins into the headers there you can see them there yep <clears throat> just make sure you get them all in all the way and then what I do is I make these two together and then I just push down on the um, on the blue tack so I make sure the boards are square the distance here is the same and then I just flip it over and I'm ready to solder now there's um, 2x5, two 2x5, by five, two by five, so you got 20 pins uh, all up. Um, if you're soldering a full length header, then you might want to consider getting yourself a full length socket. The reason I say that is because if you solder, if you're soldering the header pins to here just on their own, so they weren't in here, they were just loaded in here, the board was upside down, I was on a bench soldering. There's a fair chance during the heat process that you're going to move these pins within the header itself. The pins will move in or out, depends on the pressure that's on them. So I always recommend that you load the pins into something. So if you're soldering a full size header, then consider purchasing just a, uh, a header socket, a full length header socket, or alternatively, if you're building hotspot, which is the purpose of this video, to show you um, how to do this. So I'll just put some extra glasses on. So I do this under a fair bit of magnification because my uh, eyes are old. <laughs> um, now let's talk about the soldering iron. Okay, so what I've got here, let's get that in a shot, is a Weller. So I don't use anything fancy, um, it's a Weller. 80 watt so the reason I use an 80 watt is because I want plenty of heat now a lot of people think that you need to use a low heat iron to do this kind of small work but that's really I don't believe that's the case at all I think uh, if you're using a temp controlled nice fancy hacko I've used a hacko uh, before at, um, at uh, Lee's workshop VK direct and um, yeah, it's a nice little line, but I like my Weller because, well, I've been using this one for quite a few years now. This is actually my second Weller. I uh, decided to lash out and buy a new one because the old one was, well, old. <laughs> so, getting back to soldering, um, you'll notice that I have, I'll just get that in shot, a nice little curved tip. It's quite a fine point on it, and the iron's on, so I'm not going to touch it, but um, you can see that it's a, compared to my finger size, it's a, uh, it's a fine point tip. So um, the reason I use that is because I can get the heat directly into the space 
without applying heat to any other components because there's a lot of bits on this board so you don't want to apply heat for long the the, the trick with soldering these um, uh, SMT boards surface mount boards is um, a good amount of heat uh, and be fast you need to be quick you can't do you can't hold this iron on there for very long because you'll actually start to cook other stuff and you could have the components on the opposite side of the board just drop off so we don't want to do that. We don't want to hit the traces and the tracks for too long. <clears throat> if you're running a temp controlled iron, I think that you need to um, at least have it on about 310 degrees. Uh, certainly over 300. Uh, the hacker that I use of Lee's, um, we had to crank that up to about, um, I think, 310 before I was happy with the amount of um, heat that was in the iron. So basically all I do here is I just offer the solder up. Just make sure you can see it on shot. Yep, offer the solder up to the... Um, to the item, and then I bring the heat in. So the solder is on the opposite side to the pin that I'm heating, and I just plunge that heat in, put the solder in, a couple of dabs. So I'll just show you again. So what I did is actually I'll do the other end. I normally solder the opposing pin on the other end, and that way I'm pretty much done with holding the board down. You see I'm putting a bit of pressure on the board as well. Not a bit too much solder there. Right. So I just hold that down until the solder sets and then I've basically got, I just pick it up and check that the pins here are, are made it up to the board. They're flush so I'm not, um, not soldering anything on an angle. So getting back to the soldering, um, technique is I'll just clean the tip of the iron it's a bit grotty these are steel tip I find the steel tips last uh, quite quite a bit longer than the copper tips but it's personal choice so apply the heat apply the solder get the solder to melt on the tip of the iron give it a couple of dabs done we don't really want to hold that heat on for too long so I'll just go along and do the rest of the, the pins Bit more on that one. So you can see the um, the irons are only on the on the pins for a very short amount of time. So I just do I do one side at a time, then I turn the board around. Don't sniff up the smoke. Hold your breath. Now I'm pretty shaky in my hands so I've got to um, hold my hands on the edge of the bench so I can be still while I'm doing this. <clears throat> so that's that side done. You can see the, the board's just flapping in the breeze here but that's really not a problem because uh, I just control the, um, the iron and the, the solder. You could use a, um, a PCB vise, I've got one but I don't use it. Not for this anyway. You want to have your iron up, you know, into the work, not laying down low because you find that you can hit other. You see there's a lot of um, little um, uh, pads here, test point pads on the board. We certainly don't want to put any heat on any of those. So up to this end of the board. The trick is good heat and a little bit more on that one and be as fast as you possibly can two or three dabs of solder usually does it I just watch it flow right around that gold PCB track make sure it's floated right around alright so let's have a look at the end result so let's have a look at the uh, pins under the magnification oh it's out of shot sorry guys just looking at it close with my um, magnifiers on so then when I take the board off I've got a fully soldered set of headers and none of the pins have popped out now if you were to do it freehand on here 
there's a chance while you're hitting the pins that the pins could actually push up. I've had that happen before, that's why I always put them into the headers. Now you won't you won't kill your modem board if you use it as a soldering jig because there's no components joined to any of these tracks close by. So you're not going to um, you're not going to destroy your modem board by using it as a as a jig, but this is an old one that I use as I said, so uh, so I've already that's already wrecked, but so there you go. So the soldering to me looks pretty decent. I don't see a problem with that. I had a look at it under the magnifiers, and um, the pins are on there nice and secure. So that's pretty much it. Um, but I, I think uh, I think putting them into either a full um, pin header, like so, if you're going to solder the full 40 pin GPIO, you'd want to put that on and join them up. Otherwise, uh, if you're using it for um, for a hotspot for a modem board, then um, yeah, doing it the way I showed you is um, certainly the best way to do it. So that's the way I do it. I'm not saying that that's the only way to do it, but that's the way I've um, figured out how to do it over the years. Uh, I've been building hotspots since 2019, and um, when I started, I wasn't particularly um, good with soldering. I was uh, I was a bit shaky and a bit out of touch. I hadn't done much soldering um, prior to that for a very long time. So I slowly geared up with um, with bits and pieces on the bench so I could uh, make the job a little bit easier. I'll talk about the solders at 0.8mm. Um, I recommend that you use 1mm or lower. Uh, 0.8 is a nice uh, a nice sweet size for doing the small work, for doing um, raspberry pies and modem boards and all that sort of stuff. Um, if you go too big, you go 1mm, it's probably getting a little bit too big. 0.6mm is a bit too small, you've got to feed a lot of solder into the work to get the job done so I think um, I think 0.8 is a good selection um, this is I bought this in Australia I don't know uh, I bought it from one of the electronic stores I'm trying to think who it was it wasn't Jcar one of the big shops anyway um, so that's it there uh, it might have been Eltronics yeah I think it was Eltronics so that's it there so um, but look I've got solder I bought off um, off AliExpress as well, and uh, yeah, it's okay. All right, there you have it. So that's how I solder um, the uh, the Raspberry Pi's uh, headers. All right, thanks for watching. Seventy three.